Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1, it says, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Matthew chapter 14, verse 27, is one scripture, 14 and 27. It says, But straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. Amen. So I wanted to speak for just a, a brief moment, really out of Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2, uh, endure. Amen. Uh, let's pray. God, we thank you for the day. We thank you for the moment. I thank you for the opportunity, God, to allow me to speak. I pray, God, that you would take the coals of fire from the altar, God, and place them upon my lips, Jesus, and wipe away anything in my life that would hinder your word from going forth the way that you've ordained it to go today, God. I pray that you would help me to speak as of the oracles of God, Jesus, that you would touch the ears of the people listening, God, and that you would do everything that you want to do in this service, God. And we give you the glory, the honor, and the praise for everything that you are and everything that you do, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. So there's every person in this in this in this building, every person outside of this building, every person in the world is going to go through trials. It's just inevitable. It's just part of the fallen nature. We're going to go through issues, but we have a we have a habit of allowing the trials to destroy our lives. We get ourselves too far down in the trial, but the trial was never meant to kill you. The trial was always meant to mold you and to propel you to where you need to go. Probably one of the hardest things that I've ever had to deal with was uh, sitting there and watching my grandfather die, knowing that I was sent into his house to pull him into the church. But I neglected to do that based off how I felt and the anger and the issues that I was dealing with in my life. I neglected the calling that God had on his life. And the result of that was, watching, was having to watch him die in the hospital in a coma, knowing that I couldn't do anything about it. Because what I could have done, I neglected to do. Uh, but I knew that that was the uh, pillar in the, in the rocket fuel to propel me to where God wanted me to go now. It's, they're learning curves. Everybody has, everybody has learning experiences in their lives. But in order for you to grow, there has to be a little rain in your life. There has to be a little bit of, of turmoil and trials and, and storms that come into your life. Not everything is, is peaches and cream. A lot of the misconception that, that a lot of people have in the church is that when they start living for Jesus, that uh, disqualifies them from dealing with issues. But that is just not the case. Really, being, being in the church causes you to have to deal with more issues than a normal person. But that's, it's just a good thing because we can't, we can't come to God with the things that we that we deal with with the flesh and this that and the third but god has to break these things from off of us he has to teach us things and in order for us to learn we have to continue to to, to humble ourselves and submit to the to the hand of god because we can't do this on our own but matthew chapter 26 it uh, it describes on of of jesus in the in the garden of gethsemane um and he Really, this was a teaching point of what to do in darkness. Uh, but in Matthew chapter 26, I'm just going to uh, quote it in, my, in the CGV, Chris Gaither version. Um, Jesus was in, the, was in the garden of Gethsemane with his disciples, and he pulled a select few away and asked them to come with him. And they were in a, they were in a dark area of the, of the garden, I'm assuming. It was, in, it was at the nighttime. And what Jesus said to them, he said, I am sorrowful. So he asked them to stay so that he can go off a little while and pray. And when he came back, they were sleeping. A lot of times when God calls us to do things, we're so wrapped up with the situations around us that we just fall asleep spiritually. And we, we miss out on something that we could have gotten from God at that point. But Matthew, oh, I'm sorry, Mark chapter 1 and 35 uh, was Jesus was kind of really explaining to us through his actions of when to pray. So the, 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 the Bible says that uh, Jesus was, was in, was in the, the darkness just before the day and prayed. 
So when you pray in the darkness, the day will come. Amen. When you pray in the darkness, the day will come. And the results of, of your praying, the result, the result of your consecration will, will dictate the type of day that you have. So I can, I can become stagnant and complacent and not pray in the morning and be affected by the things of the world whenever I go out. But so often Jesus calls us to pray, but we're, we're so consumed on how we feel in the day or how somebody has treated us, uh, bearing unforgiveness because somebody did us wrong. Uh, somebody that was hurt may have hurt us. There's a, good, uh, there's a good quote out that says, hurt people hurt people. But so often we get so wrapped up in our, in our issues and in our flesh and in our offenses that we miss out. As I stated before, we miss out on the things that God has called us to do. We may get offense from somebody. Somebody mistreated us in the church. So we're angry while God's calling us to pray. We're making excuses. But God, I'm so angry right now. And God said, okay, pray. Just pray about it. Just pray about it. But the, the spirit wars against the flesh and the flesh wars against the spirit. But sometimes we get to the point where we allow our flesh to overpower the spirit. Because God's not going to force it on us. God, God's given us a self-will, so we have to actually want to seek those things. And when we seek those things with our full heart, God will be able to, to operate and, and do what he wants to do. But so many times we trust God to, uh, to, 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 to drive the car, but yet we want to have our hand on the steering wheel. It don't work like that. If two, if two separate beings have their hand on the steering wheel, it's going to be a car crash. You have to submit to God. But... We get we have we got to focus on 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 the things of God and understanding what he's trying to do in our lives. We don't know his process. We don't know the exact mind of God, but we know that he is calling us according to his purpose. We know that that this, this world is there's nothing in this world for us. But we always want to have this mindset of, of, of why is God doing this? Why is God touching my finances? Why is he touching my marriage? Why is he allowing a husband to come against the wife or the wife to come against the husband or even the children to come against the parents or whatever the case may be? Why is God coming against my job? Why, why am I having to go from job to job? Why is my health declining at a rapid rate? But there's a song that says, even when I don't see you, you're working. Even when I don't feel you, you're working. Well, that's right. But... Sometimes God operates in silence, but we, we have the, 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 the mind of we have to see what God's doing to believe that he's doing something. That was, that's why they called him Doubting Thomas. Doubting Thomas had to have a physical representation to get a spiritual aspect from it. But we oftentimes, God is God, is God of the quiet, just like he's God of the praising. God, God can operate in both, but we just, we want to know, we want to have the mind of God. We want to see God physically doing these things. But a lot of times it's internal things that God is trying to do in us. But don't ever listen, don't ever listen to the devil. So the devil, the devil, what he tries to do in those things, when you start to have that mindset of, I don't know why you're doing this, God. And that's a dangerous question to ask God is why. God, God doesn't put you through anything that he hasn't brought somebody else through. But we, we like to ask God why. And oftentimes, that's how, that's how atheists come about. For get kind of personal, because I've known, I've known people in the church that have actually left because of this reason. Oftentimes they ask God why, and they misinterpret the quietness for disapproval. And when they interpret the quietness for disapproval, they fall away from the church. But never think just because God is not speaking that he's not listening. Just because God is not speaking does not mean he's, op he's not operating. The Bible said, the, oh, in the Bible, the, the song that I was just saying, it says he never stopped. You never stop working. But the devil wants you to believe that there's no hope in that, that God, is, God has left you, God doesn't care about you, God doesn't, doesn't want the best for you. This is, this is the best that God has for you, is right now with what you're dealing with. But in order to get to that next level, flesh has to die. And our, be and our worst day in the church is better than our best day in the world. Amen. But... Uh, the Bible says that all things are working together for good. It doesn't say for my good. It doesn't say for your good. It says for good. And sometimes the things that are working together for good don't always feel good. Right. Amen. 
but we think that if it's going to work together for good, that we're going to get something better benefiting out of it. But that's, that's more times than not, that's never the case. The end result will be better, but the going through will not be better. It will, it will break us. It will, it will destroy you. It will, it will kill you. It will not, not physically, but in your flesh, it will destroy you. It will kill you. But we want to feel the good things of God without the, without the, uh, I'm trying to find the word for it. We want to feel the good things of God without the tests of God. But, and oftentimes the tests of God build us into the good things of God. Amen. But sometimes with the darkness, God allows these dark, these dark times and in the, in the dark areas of our lives, he allows these things to come into you to remind you that you need to pray. To, to, to humble you and let you know that God is, still, God is still for you. God is not against you. But oftentimes we get into these dark places and we kind of negate God and, and neglect the, the things of God because of what we're going through. And we want people to feel pity and sorrowful for us. We want people to, to, to be in, this, in these moods that we are in. But God is doing those things to remind you to, to pray, to fast, to read your word, to live for God. But so we got to be careful of, of, of blaming the devil. And oftentimes, and oftentimes we, get, we get a habit of blaming the devil and not recognizing God working in it. Because not everything, we give the devil too much credit. Not everything is of the devil. Just because your feelings got hurt doesn't mean it was the devil. But we, we got we to gotta recognize the difference between the two. But I was, I was praying last night. I was, I was praying and God, God was uh, revealing something to me. But the, the, the reason that a lot, of, a lot of issues that we deal with in the church is that just because something is coming into our lives, we have the aspect of thinking that I did something wrong. Not all the time is it that you do something wrong. But we just have to trust Jesus in the process. Sometimes Jesus is trying to get us to some place, but he can't get us there if we're holding on to what we have in our lives at that moment. So we got to trust him. And uh, we can't lean on our own understanding. So, as I was stating before, with, with the quiet times, the quiet times are meant for prayer time. It's not meant for doubting. But, there's a song, and I'm not going to sing it. There's a song by Jay Todd, and it's called uh, Stand Forever. And it says, uh, I will stand on your word. I will believe in your word. And then it stands forever, is what he's saying. That is a, I recommend y'all to listen to that song. That song is very, very powerful. But the Bible says that the grass withereth. I believe it's in Psalms. It says the grass withereth and the flower fadeth, but the word of the Lord will stand forever. And oftentimes we, we, say, we say that we believe uh, that we believe that the word of God will stand forever, but yet we we focus so much on the temporary things We so we focus so much on temporary things and not and not really paying attention to the God of eternal things And he will reveal those things to you in those dark places. I know this is pretty basic, but I really felt led to To uh, speak on this this morning and another thing that I was I really feel led to, to, to say and this isn't an attack on anybody but there's a lot of people that I, I, I genuinely feel there's a lot of people in the body that are frustrated and not just frustrated with each other, uh, even frustrated with me, frustrated with pastor, frustrated with God and that I, I was I was feeling all of this last night. And the reason that you're frustrated is because you're listening to the wrong voices. You're listening, to, you're listening to the wrong voices in the dark areas. Because oftentimes when we get in these dark areas, multiple things start to speak to us. And whatever we allow to speak more in our lives is what we'll draw to. But we got to understand that God is working in the darkness. And God is working in, in the midst of storms, in the midst of the seas that we are in. But 
one of the things that I was dealing with is uh, I was upset, and I've, I've spoken to Brother Sperling and Pastor and a couple of y'all about this. Is I was really frustrated at one point in my ministry because I haven't, I didn't go anywhere. I wasn't going anywhere in my ministry. I wasn't, I wasn't doing this for God. I wasn't doing that for God. But where God was calling me was at that moment. And God, God spoke to me, and He said, "What do you do in darkness?" And I was, it wasn't an audible voice, but He would pressing it in my spirit, and I didn't really understand. So I prayed a little bit about it, and uh, God was, was really, he brought me back to a vision that I had uh, a while ago about a thorn bush. And he said, oftentimes, we, we, we get elevated, but in between that elevation and the next level is a dark period. And in order to be able to go to that next level, something has to die and fall behind you. But oftentimes, we aren't willing to grow because we cannot let go. And in order to grow, you have to let go. You can't, you can't hold on to certain things and expect to operate in the next level with those things still in your life. But something has to be left behind. There has to be flesh that has to die. There has to be a, a, you have to crucify yourself upon the altar, for lack of better terms. But that's, and that's, that's just the reality of it. God was really dealing with me last night about... Oftentimes we, we end up trying to get and get into that next level and we're, we're reading, we're praying, we're doing everything that we have to do until we get into darkness. And then we start getting complacent and then we start not really seeing the mind of God because we don't know what he's doing. We don't physically see him working. Whenever, whenever we're not in those dark periods, we can see God working. We can see God doing these things in our lives. But then when it gets into a dark period, it's just complete silence. And then we just feel like God is just not really operating anymore and he's not doing what what he what he was doing beforehand but he is still doing it he's just he's he's trying to see if you're willing and able to do things without him always having to speak but it's just it's like it's like baby steps sometimes sometimes we can sometimes we can crawl sometimes we can walk with 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 our mom or our dad holding our hands but sometimes we don't we're not used to it and they just they just kind of let go a little bit i know when i whenever i first started riding a bike my uh my stepdad that, that he just passed recently at the beginning of the year um we were going down a hill and at first the first couple of times he was with me the whole time holding on to the seat make sure i didn't fall but uh but the next time I didn't even know he wasn't there, but I was just pedaling. I was pedaling, and then I realized I started. I realized I was going faster and faster and faster, and I wasn't really in control of the situation. And then I looked behind, and then I realized he wasn't there. So I was just pedaling and pedaling and pedaling, and eventually ended up falling. But it was a learning curve, knowing that I cannot always have to depend on a hand being there, but knowing that I have to do something when the hand isn't there. Because not, all, not, not always will, will, will that hand be there to, to give you what you need. Sometimes you've got to go get it for yourself. Right. The Bible says that, that faith without works is dead. Uh, for, to, in our terminology, actions speak louder than words. So you can have, you can have the words to say, God, I believe you. I'm, I'm trusting in you. I'm going to do what you need me to do. But if your actions don't reflect that, that's in that dark area. That dark, that, that dark area and that trial will, will prove you on those words. But, and then when we get into, we get into these dark areas, not to keep, keep reiterating on this, when we get into these dark areas, oftentimes when we fail it, God, not oftentimes, this is every time really, in order to go to that next level, you have to pass that test that he has in front of you. And if you don't pass it, you go back down to the bottom and you have to bring yourself back up. And he's not going to allow you to go to the next level unless you pass that test. But in order to do that, we have to, to, to trust in him. Some of us go into the same trials over and over again. And we just keep falling and falling over and over again. Because we're not willing to let go of these things. We're not willing to, to let go of one of the things that I know Pastor talked about. It. One of the things that I was really dealing with was Marvel Comics. And God wasn't willing to deal with me. On, God was willing to deal with me, but I had to be willing to deal with it myself. God can speak it all he wants to, but he cannot force you to do it. You have to be willing and able to do it yourself. But in Matthew chapter 14, verse 22, I'm not going to be very much uh, longer. 
uh, Matthew chapter 14, verse 22, it was talking about the uh, disciples. God, God, the Bible says that God, uh, Jesus, constrained his disciples to get into that boat. And when he constrained, it means that he, he, he kind of pulled them into the boat and told them to go to the other side. And I, pre, I, I taught a message on this uh, before called Just Keep Growing. And when God tells you to go to the other side, don't worry about what's in the middle of, the, of you and the other side. Just go to the other side. But the Bible says that Jesus went on to the mountaintop to pray. And for, so what I, what I interpret that to be, because if you, if you look at where that mountain is, the mountain is looking out at the sea. The mountain is right there by the sea. So I believe that Jesus was actually watching them to see how they would react, to see what they would do, to see if they would trust him. But a couple verses later, uh, we see in verse 24 and 25 that the ship was tossed and the, and the, and the storm was, was, was really violent. This, that, but the ship was tossed and Jesus walked on that water. Now, when I, when I read this and I actually, I read this uh, this morning. And when I read this, I kind of stopped there for a second and I read it again. It said the ship was tossed. And then the next verse, it says Jesus walked to them. And what I got from that is that the things that move you don't move God. The things that may move you and cause you to stumble will not stumble God. God can walk on your issues. So the storm that Jesus, that, that Jesus allowed them to go through, he walked straight through it. But, so I have to trust God that, that he is able to walk in my storms, that he is able to, to direct me in my storms. And one of the things that, that, I, that I have understood through, read, through reading scripture is one of the key, uh, the key, key ingredients to know that God is moving is an empty tomb. One of the key ingredients is, the, is, is, is to know that Jesus is not in the tomb. So in order for God to move, God, God can't move if he's dead. Amen. But... We see in scripture that he's not dead. So in order for there to be an empty tomb and a stone rolled away, that must mean that God's moving. That must mean that God is, God is doing something and he's trying to operate. We just have to find him. But Mark 13 and 13, I'm going to read some scriptures and then I'm, I'm all wrapped up and then we can pray. Oh, let me find it. All right, Mark 13 and 13, this is just really talking about people not really liking us and hating us, but it says, and ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake, but he that shall endure unto the end, unto the, end the same shall be saved. What I mean by that is that we, we try to go through life sometimes trying to get everybody to like us. And not everybody is for you. Not, not everybody is, is going to like you. But not, uh, some people are going to hate you. Some people just aren't, just, just aren't going to like your guts. I've met people in my life that just don't like my guts. I still pray for them. I still, I still care about them. I still, I'm still there if they, need, if they need something. I'll still be willing to go over there. They can talk about me. We, there's a guy that, I'm not going to mention his name, but there's a, guy, there's a guy at my job that just doesn't like my guts. And that, that, that's, but that's okay. That's all right. I still pray for him. I still tell him that I love him. I still tell him I'm praying for him. If he has an issue going on with his family, I'll pray right there with him. But it's just the, the nature of the world that we live in. Some people just aren't going to like you, and you've got to be okay with that. You've got you to endure through that. James chapter 5, verse 11. James chapter 5, verse 11. Oh, we'll start at verse 10. Take my brethren, the prophets who have spoken in the name of the Lord for an example of suffering, affliction, and of patience. Behold, we count them happy which endure. Ye have heard of the patience of Job and have seen the end of the Lord, that the Lord is very pitiful and of tender mercy. So enduring through affliction, enduring through issues, as Pastor uh, stated there, through, the, through the prayer, through the pre-service prayer, Joseph endured. Through those, I believe it was 13 years. It was 13 years. 
through those 13 years of affliction, his brother selling him into slavery, him end up going from slavery uh, into, into a prison. Those 13 years of his life, Joseph endured. And when you endure, you, are, you will be rewarded through that enduring. Uh, Hebrews chapter 6. Hebrews chapter 6, starting at verse 10, going to 15. It says, For God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love, which ye have showed toward his name, and that ye have ministered to the saints and do minister. And we desire that every one of you do show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope unto the end, that ye be not slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. For when God made promise to Abraham, because he could swear by no greater, he swore by himself, saying, Surely blessing I will bless thee, and multiplying I will multiply thee. And so, after he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. So God has a promise on every one of our lives. And in order for us to get to those promises, we have to endure things. There's going to be things that we're just going to have to go through to be able to get to the promises that God has for us. Uh, the Israelites in, in uh, Exodus, they had 400 years that they had to go through things. But there were, there were things that God promised to Abraham. And, after he, and when he promised those things to Abraham, there, there were just some things that, we, that they had to go through. They had to go through 400 years of just complete chaos and slavery. And then eventually Moses ended up coming. Moses had to go through some things too. Moses went through 40 years in, in, the, in the backside of the desert. Moses had to go through those things. But there were some things that, that God was dealing with in Moses through, those th through, through that 40 years. And then God ended up speaking through Moses uh, through a burning bush and, and called him and his family back into, into uh, Egypt. And he ended up giving Moses the ability to, 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 to direct uh, Pharaoh to allow his people to be let go. But there's a thing, there's a thing in Moses that, that I was kind of wanting to, to speak about a little earlier. But Moses was coming to God because God was calling Moses to do something. But a lot of times we feel like we are less than and we're not capable of doing it because of the ailments that we have in, his, in our lives. Moses continued to, to uh, talk to God saying that he was not elegant in speech, which, which means that he had a, a speech impediment of some sort, that he wasn't able to, to, to portray words properly. But God still used him. God showed him that he can still be used just because he may not be like everybody else, just because that he, he, may, he may not be like, like, like Brother Bobby or Brother Goins or Brother Clay or Brother Sperlin, Brother Bigelow. But God can still use you just because you're not like them. Just because you're not like the person beside you and you see them operating doesn't mean that God cannot operate through you. But I'm kind of early, but I feel led to, to uh, stop right there. I have some more, but I feel led to stop. But can we pray for just a moment? God, we thank you, Jesus. Lord, we worship you. God, we give you the glory. And Lord, we need you now, Jesus. We need you to help us in our dark places, God. Some of us that are dealing with a dark season right now, Jesus. We ask, God, that you touch them right now, Jesus. That you'd let them know, God, that you're still there and that you still care, Jesus. And that you would allow us to, do, to endure affliction, God. That you would help us to endure hardness as a good soldier, Jesus. That you would allow us, God, to continue to press forward, God. That we would continue to press toward the prize in Jesus' name. That we would press toward that mark that you have, Lord God. That we would do everything that you need us to do, Jesus, God. That we would not question you, God. That we would not doubt you, God. But that we, that we would believe, God, and know that you are able to do everything that you said that you would do, Jesus, God. Let us not be, be affected by the ways of this world, God, by the little foxes that spoil the vine, Jesus. We ask, God, that you would allay it, that you would set aside these things, Lord, in our lives, God, that are besetting us right now, Jesus, that are confusing our minds, God. Lord, that are holding us back from what you need us to do, Jesus, God. We ask, God, that you would reveal it in our minds, God, the things, God, that you're, that you're asking us to let go, Jesus, and God, that you would give us the strength and the ability, God, to be able to set 
them down at the altar, Jesus, and allow you to operate, God, to elevate us to that next level, Jesus, God, that when we're in the valleys, God, that we would fill you, God, in that valley, being the lily in it, Lord Jesus. We thank you, God, for all you're doing in us, God, where you brought us from and where you're bringing us to, Jesus. And we ask, God, that you would do all these things, Lord, and we give you the honor today, God, in Jesus' name.